Hey guys and welcome to Top Channel 101. So we're going to be looking at how we can make a storm generator in Blender using geometry nodes. This is going to be a first overview for someone who really knows what they're doing. But I'm going to have a slower, more detailed tutorial on Gumroad, Patreon, YouTube membership and Blender Market. All links are going to be in the description. So let's get started and uh, just look at this project and break it down. We start with this mesh here that is generated with geometry nodes and uh, it has the debris and we can control the height. I have this curve here uh, that kind of generates how tall or how short uh, you want this to be. You can make it as long as you want and uh, yeah, you will have the debris and uh, everything. Yeah, so what you do, you start with a curve object, just going to rotate it on the Y to be facing up, just like that. This is going to control the height of our tornado, our other plane to hold our geometry nodes and bring in the curve. Preview this, turn this into a mesh, give it a profile curve, sample the curve to add more resolution. And now we can also use this resolution to add more stuff. We can add some displacement to this using a set position and a normal map in the offset and use noise texture with a vector math to scale the normal using the noise. You have to subtract 1.5 from the noise uh, to remove any offset that comes with the noise node um, you can add a subdivision surface after this and now we want this to twist so i'm going to use a set position again here and just grab the position node and use vector rotate and make sure this goes into position and now we can rotate this like that we want this to twist from up down so what we can do is get the length of the curve and transfer it to this geometry so i can use store named attribute and call this length. What we want to capture is this spline parameter, which gives us the length value. So we can bring that named attribute and just look at that and use this as the angle. Uh, you can see we already have some twist. We just need to multiply it. So multiply this and that gives us that. Now, Tornado has this funnel shape that looks kind of like this. Since we are dealing with a curve here, before we turn it to a mesh. Curves come with the spline radius or curve radius. So we can use a set curve radius here and use this factor to set it. I want this to be flipped. Actually, you can even just separate these two. We want to flip this. So I'm going to use a float curve and just flip this around onto its head, just like that. And now I can even make this taper like that. But I don't want it to just be a tip at the end there. I can Make it a bit wider, just like that. And I can have more control over the shape by using a math node with the operation multiply. So I can make this wider. So now if we look at the rest of the mesh, you see we have a tornado. Right now, you can even add rotation if you want. So if I add, you can add a math node here with the operation of add. And you can see we can easily rotate this. So I can use time, the time node get that rotation and we can multiply it as well let's try it by two let's try it by four perfect 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 you can add more extra detail to this by changing the noise to 4d and playing with uh, this value here so i can add another time node extra detail like that to render this uh if we go to our shader here i will also assign a material a set material let me create one call it volume Preview this in 3D here. I'll use an, an environment texture, skies. Okay, so for this we're going to use a we're going to use a volume shader. So I'm going to come in here to this material and just use a volume, a principal volume. Connect that, and you can see what we have. I can increase the density to make it really thick. But you already see we have a few issues. Are we not seeing the other side of the volume? So let's fix that. We can go back to geometry nodes. We can close this up. So the first thing we want to do is select the outer edge here. So to do that, just grab an edge neighbors. This will give you a face count for each edge and you just compare, select any edges that have less than one face. Uh, because if you look at this, you can see this edge is connected to only this face, but this edge is connected to this and this, this is connected to this and this. So we can select this edge by just using a less than so anything that is, that has less than. So I'm going, also going to use a delayed geometry 
I use this as the selection. Uh, this is our geometry. Preview this and use delete edges greater than. Ah, I think it's delete any faces that have edges greater than one. So that will be the edges that are not boundary edges. Since we have that, we can extrude this to fill it in. Uh, we need to extrude the edges. We don't want any offsets and we can scale elements. If you're not familiar with, with what, what we're doing here, I am going to have a longer, a longer tutorial. The links are going to be in the description explaining each step I'm taking. So uh, we're just selecting these edges, the extruded edges, and then just make sure we set this to edge and just extrude them in like that. Uh, I want to repeat this one more time and maybe you can even offset them just a bit and then extrude again, extrude only the top. We don't want any offset on this and scale elements again, only the top. But this time we want to set it to extrude it to zero so that we close that gap. And now we can use a merge by distance so that this is filled in. Actually, before you even use a merge by distance, we can join the original geometry, this, with uh, this. And now we have merge geometry. Preview this and look at that. So we are halfway there. I'll go back to the materials and let's see what we can do. So the density, you can make the density as much as you want. You can also use some noise. So I can connect this in, use a math node to just multiply it. So if I add a ramp, I can basically just, just eat away on some of the noise, some of that detail, just like that. Uh, I don't want these edges to be harsh, so you can come to this here where we have the normal and just use a blur node, a blur attribute to make it vector and just blur the edges a bit, maybe by a value of one like that. Uh, let's look at what we did here. Yeah, this is what we have. Now you can add some lighting. Add a ground. Let me just use my asset library to find ground a ground ground. Now if you want to add extra stuff like debris. What you can do is uh, you need you, you need a collection of objects. So let me get some rocks here using my asset library. Let me get something like this to the scene. Now I actually want the ground to be green like in the original. So let me go to my text folders and search for ground. Uh, this is my own add-on uh, that I use for texturing. So let me just grab this, I think. Okay. Yeah. So. You want to have a rock like that, but we don't want something with a lot of resolution. So let's just make this something like that and go to geometry nodes. And uh, what we want to do is first separate uh, where we have this. Uh, so yeah, we have this. We're going to use this to instance some geometry. So I can turn this to points or I can use the distribute points on mesh. So we have a ton of points like that. That still have the same animation and just bring in the rock, uh, which is, I think this, and then use instance on points. Just use this here, uh, randomize the rotation, uh, run, use a random scale, random value scale, just like that. We also want the rotation to be random. We can either use the rotation directly here. Yeah. Which I think is good. Yeah. You want to join it after the material so we can, can just join it. But one thing you will notice is that our instances are attached onto the mesh, which is not good. So what we can do is instead of using the same rotation that our tonality is using, we can bypass it. So our rotation starts here using this set of nodes. So we can bypass that and so that that rotation is not applied to our nodes. So you see they just there and what we can do is uh, just use this directly here. So it gets the same rotation, but we can still add more rotation to this offset the rotation a bit. And another thing we could do is you can use the vector math and use the scale to scale this out 
just like that. But you see, we are ex ex scaling it up as well, which is something we don't want. So we can use a multiply. I multiply this by one. Now, if we multiply this on X and Y, we can see we can push this out quite a lot. Now, this is a lot of particles, so let's use a few, just a few. You can use different rocks, different objects, and just import a collection instead of using this object info. But you see in my original, I did something quite different. Instead of using a collection, for example, just bringing in this rock collection, uh, this C collection, I have to reset and separate objects. If I use that here, you see, uh, I get, I don't have control over the types of objects that I'm preview, that I'm adding. I wanted to have, because you see, I have uh, rocks. I also have chairs, I think. I have chairs. I, I have a bunch of different objects. I have basically these objects here are what I'm using as instances. So they are in a collection. If I just use that collection directly, I have no control over the distribution, how, how many chairs I, I get in this scene. I have the same number of rocks, the same number of uh, chairs, the same number of in this, but I, I didn't want to have that many chairs. So that's why I created this set of nodes so that in case I wanted, say, more, more chairs, I just have to look for the chair nodes and just increase the count of chairs. And you can see now we have a lot of chairs. So I just, if I want more wooden, uh, these wooden planks, I don't know what they're called. I can increase that if I want to. And if I want more of these, I can do that. So I have control over the particle system. Actually, I think I like this better. I have more sheets of, uh, let me just, yeah, I can even control the scale just like that. Yeah, so what is in this node? If I tab into that, you can see I'm just, I'm just using a duplicate element, uh, which can duplicate uh, the different elements you have. And uh, you can set the amount. Uh, that's what I'm using here. And I just uh, also setting up the scale and rotation of, and random rotation of these instances in that node group. And uh, that's what I'm using to control how many instances of that object are in my debris. Basically creating a group or collection just like this, but with a predetermined number of uh, rocks, chairs, and uh, other stuff. Uh, but for this, I wanted to have more rocks than the other pieces. Uh, so yeah, that's how I got that. Yeah, so the other thing I did was animate some particles on the ground uh, that I also, let's come back to this curve here. Just make sure that this is not too tall. Yeah, so the last thing I did is make sure that I added this extra layer of animation that I'll show in the longer video. So in the longer video, I'll show you how to add those extra rocks that are flying around and the, the, the wind or, yeah, atmosphere that is rotating in the background. And yeah, basically those final touches that you might want to add under uh, the lightning, of course, are that light effects in the video. Okay, thank you for watching. Project files are going to be in the description on my Gamble page, Patreon, YouTube membership, and my Blender Market page. And that also includes the longer video. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next video.